Welcome to Authentic Work with God. Today's topic is a question. And the question is, do Christians suffer? Let me read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. I read, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. One of the most shocking heresies of our time is the teaching that true Christians do not suffer. Uh, through television screens, uh, airwaves, from church pulpits and on crusade grounds, this false claim is popularized by charlatans who call themselves preachers and teachers of the Bible. In a mad attempt to draw desperate crowd to themselves, they promise the people who hear their words, they promise them butter and bread. They tell this gullible crowd, as soon as you come to Jesus, through our ministry and remain with us, your troubles will be over. After all, no real child of God suffers, they claim. To these popular Bible preachers and teachers, Suffering is an anathema. It is an abomination. It is an indication that a person is not right with God. It is true that the Bible mentions that some suffering is the result of evil action or sin in the world. This type of suffering came upon man after the fall in the Garden of Eden. For example, uh, age, sexual promiscuity, in most cases armed robbery, and his attendant problems, rape, resulting from indecent dressings. These are as a result of the fall of man. But most kinds of suffering are not related to the fall. Let us briefly examine a few of these. One, there is suffering which serves to shape and refine God's children. Read First Peter chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. Then you go to uh, chapter 5 and read verse 10. The book of Hebrews declares that Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. And that he was perfected through suffering. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. Suffering has the potential of demonstrating God's power. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and 7. Those who suffer are in a position to comfort others. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 6. In the second place, suffering helps Christians to identify with Christ, which is more than suffering for Christ. Through persecution and tortures, people have suffered for the sake of Christ and his kingdom. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29, 2, Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5, and then 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. To suffer with Christ, however, is another matter. Paul speaks of the fellowship of his suffering. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Christians share in the suffering of Christ in the sense that through suffering they identify with Christ. To be a disciple involves suffering like the master. Christ as the Lord and his, belie and his believers as disciples are bonded even further through the experience of suffering. Number three, there is the suffering which we endure for the sake of others. The prophet Isaiah portrayed the suffering servant as sin bearer when he declared, I quote, by his stripes we are healed. 
We find this in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Jesus announced repeatedly that his suffering was his mission. Matthew chapter 17 verse 12. Luke chapter 24 verse 46. Looking back to the cross, Peter explained that Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. What then is suffering? In the Christian context, suffering is agony, affliction, deprivation, distress, intense pain or sorrow. Suffering has been part of human experience since man's fall into sin. The Psalms, one third of which are laments, include the graphic descriptions of suffering. At least Psalm 22. The theme of the book of Job is the problem of suffering and why God allows the righteous to suffer. So which book are today's false teachers reading? This same Bible? Certainly not. The Bible is not just bread and butter. There is also bitter water. And there are tistles, tones, gullies, ditches, and hurdles. Let us not allow ourselves to be deceived by today's bread and butter preachers who overemphasize physical, material, economic, and social well being of Christians to the neglect of the reality of suffering. Let us not, in the process of reaching out for the gold, as we always run around prosperity preachers, lose our minds and forget the suffering servant who had to go to the cross because of you and me, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us not disregard or treat with ignominy or levity the reality of Christian suffering, which started with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. Let us participate joyfully in his suffering. After all, it was for our sake he suffered. Um, let me conclude this this way. Let us not put on long faces, complaining and nagging when we are being persecuted for the sake of the gospel we preach and practice. Suffering resulting from the practice of our faith is expected. Let us also be aware that if we endure to the end, our reward in heaven is great. There is always the temptation to follow the easy road and to always desire to eat our cake and have it back. We always face the temptation of amassing wealth, the easy but on Christian way, and to become popular no matter what it takes. In an attempt to become like others who have made it, many Christians have compromised the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have abandoned the faith which they once held so dearly. I do not know what you are going through right now in your personal life, in your marriage life, in your business, in your political career. Um, in your educational life and in your faith in Christ. I, I, I do not know what is happening. Uh, I don't know what you know your thoughts about joining the crowd. Especially these days of hard times and uh, I do not know how you are thinking and what you are thinking. Uh, how you want to make it in the face of the problem of lack of food in the family, school fees not being paid because of lack of money, and all the turmoils that are going on right now, especially in our own country, Nigeria. The situation is so bad. And so many people have um, abandoned their faith in Christ because of what they do. 
Uh, they go to church quite all right, but after church, the things they go into betray the, the, their faith in Christ. May I urge you, my brother, to stay with Christ. May I urge you, my sister, to stay with Christ. He suffered for us. If he did not suffer, we will not be who we are today. He went to the cross that we might be saved. And the Lord says, I will be with you to the end. He suffered. He knows what suffering means. But he wants us to persevere in our faith and he will not leave us alone. He knows what we need at any time and he will come to our aid. May the Lord help us at this time of uh, want, these difficult days, to be able to go on with our faith, hang on to Christ, and not allow anybody to deceive us and not look for the easy way that we betray the faith we hold in Christ. May the Lord lead you and guide you. May he continue to preserve you in these difficult days that you may not soil your hands with evil. This is my prayer for you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is again your brother and friend, Peter Nemadin Dong Wachiku. Loreto Center for Family Life and Pastoral Care, Owere, Nigeria. Let's meet again uh, next week. And until then, have a wonderful, wonderful week.